Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to create a text box in the form header of our food log so that if we're going to add stuff, let's say we want to add a meal that we had earlier, right? And it's now 8 o'clock at night and we had the meal at 4. I don't want to have to change the time on every one of those entries. So we'll put 4 o'clock and a text box in the header, and then every new entry that we put on the form will have four o'clock on it. That's how you can use the form header to set the default value. And this is part 48 of my fitness database series, but whether or not you care about fitness, this is a video series about building cool databases with lots of tips and tricks like this one. So if you haven't watched parts one through 47 yet, do yourself a favor and watch them. It's about building databases, not necessarily about fitness. So. Are you ready? Here we go. Next up is a little annoyance that um, that I want to fix. Um, sometimes you want to add a meal that you had earlier, right? But when you add stuff, like if I come down here and add, you know, this, it puts in right right now, which is 1057. So it's stuck it right there. And that's OK. But then you got to go back in here and change this and blah, blah, blah. So it'd be nice if we had a way to put the time up here, right? When the form opens up, have it default to whatever the current time is, but you could change it. So if I'm, if, let's say I forgot I had a snack at 2 p.m. and it, it's gonna involve two or three items, right? I can change this to 2 p.m. and then everything that I add will go in at 2 p.m. And it'll obviously follow our other rules too, right? The seconds thing, but let's do that. So I'm just gonna take, um, I'm gonna take this guy and put it up here. Ugh, copy, paste, there it goes. Stick it right there. And let's give it a little color. Let's make it uh, that guy, yeah. And let's call this guy, let's call it default food time text. And we're gonna make this unbound because we want, to, we want to be able to change it, but it's not bound to anything in the table. And I'm gonna set the default value equal to format food log time of right now. So when it opens, so when the form opens, it's gonna go, it's gonna get, it's get, gonna get right now, right? And it's gonna format the food log time, which is that, uh, function that we made to format the text properly because all we really care about is the time portion because the date's coming out of this guy. All right, save that. And let's see what we get. Close that, close it. And there we go. All right, 11 p.m. And it just, it just so happens to be exactly 11 p.m. So that's good. Now, this guy, all right, this guy doesn't have a default value, right? Just double checking. Yep. You, you got to remember, folks, it, it's been many weeks since we started this thing. So sometimes even I don't remember all the stuff that we did in like part four. So I have to go and just double check and, re and review sometimes. Um, so we put that value there, if memory serves, in the before insert event. We set the food date time. Yeah. So food date time equals proper log date time. Let's go there. Okay. So here we go. If the date value of now is the date value of log date. So if we're on the same day, right, entry for today, proper log date time equals, now instead of now, we're gonna take today's date and add that value up top, right? The default food time text. So we're gonna say date plus time value of default food time text. Because that should be a, D, a, 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 a a, a valid time value, okay? Oh, we also need to update that uh, if the user changes it manually. But let's let's test what we got here so far first. Debug compile, make sure. Debug compile once in a while, I gotta say it. It's the, it's the stupid catchy things that I repeat them and you remember it, right? Oh, that's so, that's so dumb when Rick says debug compile once in a while. Yeah, but you remember it, right? Or if you said it, you gotta forget it, those little things. I save them and I make them silly so that it sticks in your brain. All right, let's go check. Let's go test this part first, and we'll deal with that after update event. Let's see if changes. Yes, open her up. Okay, so I'm so now if I add a value, so this is eleven oh three. I'm going to change this now to two p.m. 
okay? And yeah, we have to fix that so it formats it properly. I get that. But now if I add a value down here, because we're on the same day, it should go to 2 p.m. And there it is right there. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay. All right. Delete that because I didn't need that. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure I don't add. This is my actual food log for today. I'm doing pretty good. 1,800 calories. And I, I ate a lot of food today. So you don't have to, uh, you don't have to starve yourself, folks. I, I think I eat more now that I'm actually watching my calories and trying to eat healthy. And I'm eating stuff like meatloaf, right? Today I had uh, uh, pork tenderloin with, uh, with, potatoes it's these metabolic meals i love them but it's all portion controlled so this meal was only 362 calories and then i added a, a whole can of mixed vegetables a tangerine and a banana and that whole thing was what three four five six hundred calories but it's like you know you watch what you eat but i i think i eat more food volume now than i did before when i didn't care <laughs> you know two pieces of pizza is 800 calories right there all right anyways so I promised myself during the series I'd give you guys little tips from like my diet and exercise stuff, but I wouldn't preach. I'm not preaching. I'm just saying you can eat healthy and eat a lot of food, and and you don't have to starve yourself to lose weight. That's the pro that's the mistake I made the first time I did this was I starved myself. Okay, so we need to after update event update food date time. We basically need to say that it equals the we need to just format it with this guy. So if they update this in the after update event it's going to basically be that but it, but we're going to use this instead so the default food time text equals format food log time default see see why it's nice to make these things functions because we don't have to rewrite any code we just call the same guy that we wrote earlier that does the same thing we're just taking the time and making sure it's formatted properly right debug compile oh variable not defined Default food date time. What did I do? Oh, yep. Yep, 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 yep. All right, so, all right, this is actually sending food date time, not food time text. So we, this guy is expecting an actual date value. That's not a problem because we can just send it this as a date value. Now, we might get away with doing this because access is pretty good about converting strings directly into text. If you said, let's test it and see, we might get away with it. If not, we'll just convert this over to a time before we send it. So debug compile that, it should work. Now let's just test it and make sure. Sometimes I'm a little leery of doing this though. Let's see. All right, so if I come up here and I type in 2 p.m. All right, it did work. It formatted it nicely because basically we're sending a string value, because that's a string, right? We're sending a string value into here and then it's formatting what's expecting as a date. So Access is doing a, a an automatic type casting. Type casting is when you convert from one type to another, like an integer to a string or a, a, a boolean to a long, whatever. So if you don't, I, I, I try not to rely on that if I can. And in fact, it's probably a good idea when they update that to check and make sure it's valid, right? Again, if this is a database that you're just building for your own purposes, okay, great, but we're, we're you know, the point of this video series is I want to teach you good tricks too, or good tips and, and best practices. So at this point here, we should probably say if not is date um, default food time text, then let's just set it equal to how about right now? And you can uh, you can get you can chop off the date part so you could say now minus date like that. Uh, then uh, oh hang on I gotta. Duh. then default food time text equals that, All right? So if it's not a valid date, then it'll just put the current time in there. Now minus date gives you like today at 9 p.m. Minus today gives you just 9 p.m., right? All right, save it, debug, compile once in a while. Already compiled it, close it, close it, open it. All right, let's try putting in here 3 p.m. Okay, that looks good. Let's try putting in here null. Perfect, see? Because null is not a valid date. And it, put, it just put today's time in there. All right, there we go. So let's say I had, a, I had T at 4 p.m. I can come in here and put 4 p.m. in there. And now anything that I add down here, do I have T? I don't have T in there, do I? I'll pick something else. I'll put an apple in there. Boom, 4 p.m. See, right there. And if I add uh, a protein shake, or a cliff bar. I'm going to do a cliff bar. 
Boom. Okay. And now, just to double check, let's take a look at our log and make sure that those seconds are still working. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. See. See. So they'll stay sorted properly now too. All right. And now I get to get rid of this stuff because I didn't eat it. <laughs> it's throwing my numbers off. Okay. Cool. Another cool little trick added. See, that's how you can get the default value. And this works in regular uh, forms, too. You don't have to have all this VBA trickery, trickery going on. I cover it in my default value video. Technically, I cover it in the extended cut, though. You could put a value in the header or the footer and then use that as the default value for new records as they come into your form. But this one, hey, it's worth becoming a member, folks. If you're not a member, already sign up and you can watch this guy. So that's going to do it for part 48, folks. Let's see. Today is Thursday, October 9th. I record these way ahead of time and, and publish them later, as you know already if you've watched the previous videos. So tomorrow's going to be Quick Queries Friday for the 10th, and then uh, Monday the 13th is Columbus Day, so no video that day, except maybe I'll do a Columbus Day video or Indigenous Peoples video, whatever. Uh, so the next fitness video will be on Tuesday the 14th of October 2025. But that's it for your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I will see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.